guys today I'm gonna paint on a piece of 8x10 cradled wood I have covered this with uh, three layers of acrylic gesso and I used this little sanding block in between each layer I did go ahead and sketch out my layout because I've already attempted to paint this once for a tutorial this is going to be an oil painting but I will be doing an acrylic underpainting just to help with some of the values. So I'm going to start with some acrylic craft paint. This stuff's real cheap. Got this at Walmart, like a dollar or two for this whole eight ounces. And I'm going to use a really worn down mop brush just to block all of my um, shadows in really worn down mop brush it used to look like this <clears throat> all right sky is going to be really bright because I want that contrast and then I'm going to have <clears throat> a little bit of um, some background hill like a background hill here and it's going to be some some stuff out here <clears throat> get the base of this little hillside a little bit darker i always start with my darkest values first and then work my way up this is all going to be probably black actually so i may grab my black in just a second and go over this but already picked up the brown so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go with it mm, bottom of the candle definitely gonna be dark it'll be a red candle This part does not have to look real good and then lighter as you go up to a very very light color there and all of this is going to basically be black so I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to grab my black yet. This hillside is going to be very light because it's going to be really far away. I pretty much always do this anytime I do an oil painting. <clears throat> I just like to have something over top of the white because I'm not real experienced with oil and somehow doing the underpainting really helps me when I block in all my values and stuff I don't have to rely so much on my oil I'm relying more on my underpainting than anything and for the oil the, the most important part for me ends up just being the color that I mix up. So I will try to leave this cloth over here if I can remember so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just wiping it off. I'm going to grab a little bit of green. I really don't care what color green I block this in with. That is like the most Christmassy green I've ever seen. Green, 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 green. I'll put a little bit of brown in there too so it's not so crazy green. That was just the first green I grabbed. <laughs> and there's gonna be some grass out here. 
Okay, grassy field at the bottom of this big hill. Uh, if you want to use that green, uh, it's called forest green. And the brown that I'm using, if you want to do it exactly like me, uh, is uh, burnt umber. And then just white craft paint. So that's that's all I've used so far. Just in case you want to do it exactly like me. And that's totally fine if you want to. I don't care. I'm being real loose with how I'm painting this. Because all these little... Like when I paint like this. All these little uh, shadows and highlights that are like automatically getting created. I want those. That's going to help me with my oil. Let's bring this grass on down a little bit more maybe. I don't know. That's all going to be black. <clears throat> um, darker down here. I'm going to get this. Um, maybe there's like a bush or something through here. I don't know. It's all going to be blurry. You're not really going to be able to make out exactly what it is. But judging by the colors, you, you should be able to tell that it's outside. And you're looking at some kind of field and a hill or a mountain. Nature. Just going for nature in general. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to get out some black acrylic craft paint. <clears throat> and I'm going to fill in, I'm going to wash this, not wash it, but just rinse it off a little bit. Get some of that, because there's white in there, I don't want that white. I'm just wiggling my brush here. 
I'm just trying to get like the a shape of some kind of tree or a bush or a real big something out here. Um, I may do like a skinny dead tree right through here too because I, I don't want this all to just be, I don't want it to just be around this uh, candle. I don't want it to look like I've painted it around the candle. Just wiggling again, only blocking in for like values so that when I paint over it with oil, uh, it'll be a lot easier. And all I have to really worry about is color. Ooh, that's like way too much of an incline there. Let's change that. Hopefully this one turns out better. I want to make more tutorials for you guys. But it is so, it's so much work and it's, it's really stressful, <clears throat> unfortunately. So this is my double candle here. This will be the reflection. This will be the actual candle. <clears throat> going for a real blurry look back here. I'm going to use my hair dryer and go over the black with one more layer. Another layer of black. I'm gonna leave my flame open there. I don't wanna cover that up. And I'm not gonna go all the way to the edge with this second layer so that it'll uh, help me get that blurry look. This wasn't part of my original plan to carry this on out here, but I don't want, uh, again, I don't want it to look like it's just framed around my candle. I want it to look kind of natural out there. <clears throat> again, not going all the way to the edge. Try to make it look blurry. Iridian. I don't need a whole bunch of this. I don't know why. We just got so much of that out. Almost equal parts Viridian and Alizarin. Just a little more Viridian than Alizarin. And a little dab of Cad Yellow Light. This is Windsor & Newton oil, by the way. This is the fast drying oil. So whatever layers that I put on here today, by tomorrow, it'll be um, dry enough that I can go back over it and it won't cause me a big issue. It won't be completely dry, but it'll be dry enough that I can add another layer over it. And it won't just pull up all of the paint. And then white. So Viridian Green, ugh. 
stick my finger in it. Uh, Viridian Green, Lizard, Crimson, Cad Yellow, Light, and White. I do not need that much paint. A little bit much. And a little bit of yellow. Actually, that's a good color for my grass. <clears throat> so I'm going to use that for my grass and not the mountain. Well, I don't know. Yeah, that's a good mountain color. Might be a little bit dark. Yeah, okay, never mind. JK, I'm going to use it for the mountain. I don't know what I'm doing guys <laughs> I'm just I'm just out here winging it uh, same colors for the grass just uh, mm, let's see what happens when we add a little more yellow nothing because that's really dark I need a little more yellow okay let's see what happens here green and gray I like it that's okay we'll see what it looks like when we get it on there because it's always a little bit different oh I need a slightly gray color for the sky so it's not going to be just like solid white. <clears throat> I'm going to take my mountain color and the rest of my white. Just whatever I got left. And probably add a little bit more. Because I need more to cover that sky. <clears throat> I don't want just pure white. Now, I'm going to see, I'm going to see what this looks like. That's sky. That is mountain. I don't think my sky is light enough. It's way too dark. And then grass. I like the mountain and the grass. More white. Okay. Um, a little bit of my sky color and more white. So I'm not gonna like mix it up. I'm just gonna I'll just mix it as I'm putting it on here. Not really sure if you can even see that on camera. I can barely see it in person. But it's a really, really light color. I don't want solid white though, so I uh, tried to mix a little something. A little something, something. gonna look white now I've got some brush hair and some bits and bobs some stuff stuck in there but when this dries tomorrow I'll be able to just wipe right over it and all of this stuff will come out 
So we need little extra pieces of crap here that I've got. <laughs> They'll disappear tomorrow when I wipe them away. I'm gonna go right over top of this edge uh, where it's in the sky, just in the sky part. I'm not gonna go over that down here. And um, I'll just wipe off my brush and I'll just continue to use this brush. Now I'm gonna do my mountain. Put it up into the sky where I stopped with the sky, and then wipe off most of my paint. Oh, where's my second camera over here? Is it recording? Okay, good. And then right along where the hill goes, I'm just gonna, if I can get my arm turned here, I'm just gonna tap and blur that line. And then fill this in. I'm using the underpainting to help me with like a couple shadows. <clears throat> this way I mix up like one color, the mountain color, and I don't have to do so much with my oil. I let the underpainting work for me. I let the underpainting do half the half the work, the job. <laughs> um, green. I'm just gonna use the same brush again because it's working out fine. That is really, really, really green. That may be too green. It looked okay. Um, now that I've got this all like kind of painted in here, I think it's a little too much. That green looks nice. Um, well, I don't know. Is it too green? I do want it kind of dark. Let's see what it looks like right up against that mountain. I think it's fine. Again, using the underpainting to help me out. I don't think that's bad. off my paint and then I'm going to do the same thing that I did here. I'm going to blur. I'm actually going to bring this grass up flat. I'm going to blur that line. in we're 30 minutes in and I've already got almost all of my background done I'm making real good time now I'm gonna get out get out some black 
And <coughs> I guess I could continue to use this brush. Make sure I got most of it wiped out. Because it's giving me a real nice blurry effect. Uh, I'm going to start down here. And just work my way up. Oops. Hold on. Okay, I didn't get any oil on my um, candle, so that's good. But I do need to uh, add some red to that candle. There's my acrylic paint. My bad. Oh my goodness, that was way too much red. I did not need that much. I'm just going to use a filbert brush. You can really, any brush will be fine for this. And I'm going to block this in down here where it's darker. And um, a brighter red. Forgot the star of the show here, the, the red candle. Just blocking in right now still. Um, this is going to be even brighter up here, but I'm just going to use the same color red because then I'll, I'll, I'll handle it with the uh, oil. Still looks even a little bit brighter because uh, I didn't put any brown underneath it. <clears throat> and then I will take this uh, worn down mop brush used to look like this one but it's worn out you can cut these to get that blunt edge if you want to now I'm gonna take a little bit of black down here and darken this up even more because I don't think I did um, enough under painting I didn't do enough brown down here I don't think to really like to work on that uh, the value down here I don't think I did enough and then I want to do the same thing over here which was not that I did red first This is a reflection, so it's not going to be as uh, bright <clears throat> as this one, but I want to go ahead and get like the values and stuff in here. It's going to be blurry too. down here
just a little twin copy. But blurry. Okay. Sorry about that. I was just talking about how fast I was moving along. To the black oil. I'm going to dry this real quick. I keep getting ahead of myself. I'm going to make sure this acrylic is dry before I go over it. I'm really not using a whole lot of oil paint. I like to work in layers with my oil it does dry really fast and I can go back over it tomorrow <coughs> to correct values or bring up my highlights and stuff like that I'm gonna leave a gap around my flame I don't want to put it right up on the white because I want to leave room for some glow and if it's all painted black it's gonna be nearly impossible to bring that glow up make it glow uh, with that black so <clears throat> just leaving a little gap there <laughs> now this is the part that I was really worried about this is also a part that I messed up on my last tutorial the last blurry uh, window that I to make. Uh, I don't know if it was just the brush I was using or what, but it, I was trying to make like a tree, make like a tree and get out of here. I was trying to make a tree and it just did not look like a tree at all. It was not real tree. It did not possess the qualities of a tree. Um, I'm just going to keep, I'm going to keep using this brush and see if, see if this works. Because I'm afraid if I switch brushes now I'm going to get, I'm going to get the wrong effect. So I'm just going to keep doing this. I might switch to like a real small one and just get some more stuff coming out. But for now, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna keep trucking on. Keep on keeping on. Oh my god, that was a lot of paint right there. Oh, I like that. That looks cool. Uh, I just moved to the edge of my brush, and I'm doing this. Ooh, I like that. That was a total mistake. I didn't mean to do that. Edge of your brush. Okay. I can do that. I can do edge of my brush. Edge, edge, edge. I'm holding it like this and just wiggling. Oh god. Easy. I may need to go in here and do something with some kind of like shadow and highlight because it's real flat. Oh, can I do that over here? Can I turn my hand the right way and get that effect? <laughs> can I make it work? I'm looking for 
some paint on the edge of my brush. Uh, I'm gonna go up here a little bit with it too because it looks it's looking real rounded right there. Man. <clears throat> I think maybe once I get all of the rain on here, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. I think it'll be fine for it to be pretty much solid black. Cool. I like it. I'm just going to use my finger here. Kind of... Make sure there's no like really sharp points, like blotches of paint. I want to make sure it's real blurry. I don't hardly have any grass left. <laughs> so I'm glad I didn't worry too much about that color because it doesn't matter. The red candle. So I'm gonna swap out my plate because I made a big mess on this plate. And I'm gonna grab my white, what little bit of white I've got left because I'm gonna need it for the rain. And I'm gonna put this plate aside in case I need to touch something up later. Uh, is this brush dirty? I don't know. I think it's got some green paint in it. We don't want that. Um, I'm done with this one for now as well, but I'm going to hold on to it just in case. So now let's paint the candle. No, 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 no. The candle is in front. The window's behind the candle. So I need to do the rain first, and then I do the candle last. My bad. Um, so, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Move my white paint back. <sighs> okay. I had it right the first time. I'm going to use some liquid light gel. I'm going to dig it out with this painting knife or palette knife because... Um, because if you pour your liquid gel, it's going to uh, get around the edge. And then when you put your lid back on, it's going to dry and you're probably never going to be able to open this thing ever again. I've had to throw away so many bottles of liquid gel because they will not come back open. Just a little helpful tip there for you. So what this gel is going to do, um, you can use, you could use uh, any kind of thinning medium, like something to thin your oil paint. Uh, that's just what I have. So I'm going to mix white uh, minus this big cat hair. Don't want the cat hair in there. White and the liquid gel because I want to be able to splatter some rain on here. So it's got to be real thin and able to splatter. I'm going to wipe off any big clumps. Make sure I don't have any big clumps. There's a big hair, another big hair. And uh, this is going to ruin my fingernails, but they're already filthy right now. So now I'm just going to flick my brush. And it may take you a couple tries to get that down, but wipe it off a little bit over here just so you don't have any big, um, big uh, clumps or whatever. Okay, let's try it with this finger. Flick, flick. It's really thin. 
really fine rain. Like, uh, it's, it's tiny. I want some bigger clumps. Bigger clumps of rain. Look at harder. Woo! Look it, look it, look it, hard. I'm getting it all over my wall behind my desk. <laughs> oh well. Life of an artist, right? Now I want to do some big um, drips down the window. And I'm going to use my long liner brush, but any liner brush will do. Um, mine is from the Deco Enchanted set, but unfortunately this um, set of brushes is discontinued from Deco. So if you have a liner brush of any sort, it will be fine. Uh, this one's from the Deco Fine Detail set, so you could also use that one. I'm just going to use the big one because I like it. So, very loosely... holding my brush. I'm barely holding it, okay? That is real white. Uh, hopefully that will, um, I can, I can fix this. Okay. Very loosely. I don't want it to look too straight. Let's do one more over here that just kind of like disappears right there. <clears throat> and then Let's do, let's put some space between it. Come over here, let it go this way. And then down. Uh, a little bit heavier up here. That looks like a big C and I don't like it. There we go, that's better. Now this uh, gel will um, help it dry even faster. Let's do one or two over here too. Make these kind of straight. I'm just kind of wiggling, holding my brush really loosely. I don't want it the same um, width all the way down, so I'm alternating pressure. So I, I'm holding the brush back here at the end, basically. I'll move all the way out. So maybe you can see my hand too. <clears throat> as, as far out as I can go, as my tripod will allow. Okay, holding it back here. God, my fingers are filthy. Holding it back here and very loosely, I'm, I'm applying more pressure at the top and I have a shaky hand, so it's working out to my advantage. And then I let up on the pressure. And, and then more.
more pressure, less pressure, more pressure, less pressure, till it just kind of disappears. Let's put it over here and I'll make it crooked. Uh, I've already got one that goes like this. So let's bring this one in here. I'm just going to do it really fast so I'm not like overthinking it. And disappear there. <clears throat> Actually, I'm going to go ahead and bring this one all the way down kind of heavy. I don't want them all to disappear at the bottom. And that one a little bit heavier. Distance between them, so I'm going to put another really crooked weird one here, kind of close to this one. All right, now I'm gonna add some shadow to these big water drops or these big water drips. And for the shadow up here, because it's so bright, I don't wanna use black. Uh, I'll probably use a little bit of black here, but it definitely, I think, definitely needs to be lighter up top. So I think I'm gonna use my, my heel color with some white because I didn't just use that solid color. I had a little bit of white in it. Now, this is oil and I don't want to stick my hand all over it so I'm going to get out my stick. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, hmm, I'll make it dark on this side. Now in some places, not everywhere, I'm gonna add a little bit of a shadow down the side. It's a little out of focus for you, isn't it? That bright white up here is making it a little hard to see, but I'm trying to zoom in here so you can I'm only going to do this for the light parts up here, okay? Okay? Okay. <laughs> I say um a lot and okay. And a little. This just helps define the water stream, the, the water that's streaming down. Also, um, gives you that illusion that it's 3D and not just a flat white line. Uh, very little pressure and not down the whole thing. Again, just break it up a little bit. Now, um, for this part, I'm going to go a little bit darker. I may mix a little bit of that mountain color with it. I'm gonna use some liquid gel too to get this thinned out because it is like not spreading real easily. So I'm gonna go black.
So like, uh, let's do a big one here. Black at the top. Does not need to be like perfectly round or anything like that. These are water droplets, so they're going to be not perfect. And then some white. And then I'm just going to really lightly blend those together. And then you got a water droplet. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Black. White. Already blended that. Oh my gosh, that is so much paint. And then some white. <clears throat> Water droplets. Okay, now I'm going to paint the fire. And I'm going to use red, yellow, and white. <clears throat> Start with the red on the outside. This is why I left that little gap. It's way too much. Way too much red. Black. To touch up around it there. <clears throat> Uh, well, maybe I can use, yeah, this is the brush I used earlier. I'm going to just kind of blend that red into that black because I don't want it real bright. And then wipe off my brush. And then grab some yellow. And then I'm going to blend into that red. a little and then up like this and wipe it off again and now that I've already got some red and yellow mixed um, on my brush I just wiped it off. I didn't like clean it or anything. I'm going to blend into the yellow now. And wipe off again. And blend some more. The white is never just going to be solid white. You can add a little bit of solid white to make it really bright, but it's never just pure white. Sorry, I'm wiping off my brush over here. I see. 
That's black. I got a little bit of black out. I see uh, something weird happening right there, so I'm going to cover that up. <laughs> um, back to my red. Now this one's going to be a little more blurry. It's not going to be quite as detailed. So I'm going to be real careful with it. And then I'll probably just like brush over it to make it blurry. That is so red. I mean, that is so, uh, it's like purple. It's getting purple. I don't want purple. I'm going to blend it into the black. It's getting too small now. <laughs> Wipe off my brush. And then in with the white. It won't be as bright either. Because this is just a reflection. <clears throat> Ooh, that looks really nice. Looks like a reflection. Almost like that's what I was trying to do. I love when that happens. And it's a little bit smaller too. Now, I'm gonna get this background uh, or the reflection candle painted and then I'll paint the one in the front. I already had some red out on this plate. This is, um, like cad red light and the other one was just regular cad red so uh brush 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 brushy brush brush brushy brush in the funky bunch all right and this is a flat brush from the deco enchanted set you could use a flat brush from the uh fine detail set or even from the clarity set. I'm just going to use flat. That's really all that matters. So the brightest red at the top. And I'm going to try to do a little bit darker than what this one's going to be. So I'm not going to add anything to it. Just going to use that red right over top of, wait a minute. I think it needs to come up higher. Because this is a reflection of a candle, not the candle itself. I can still see my white uh, splatters. my raindrops so that's okay and then I'm going to come in from the bottom with my black and just kind of make it disappear okay now let's paint the candle and uh, I'll do some highlights, some shadows up here after I get the red on. <coughs> I can still see a little spot right there, but I'm just going to start with this red. And I need some alizarin crimson. Um, 
Blizzard and Crimson. Down here. Because it's a really nice deep red. And I'm going to work that up into the lighter red. So that it looks like it's gradually changing colors. There's something weird happening right there. Don't know what. I may have to make that skinnier. I'll make it just a little skinnier. I'm going to put some of this alizarin crimson back here, too. Not much. Because it is a reflection, but... And a little bit more brighter red up here. But it's got to stay darker than the red in front of it. And I just covered up my paint splatter again, but that's okay. I'll add it again. <laughs> okay. Now, keep adding more red, more alizarin crimson down here. Then I'm eventually going to add... Um, I'm going to put some green in there with this alizarin crimson for the shadow down at the bottom. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of green. This is the green that I mixed up for over here, so I'm just using that. That's not the right color. Not the right color. Still not the right color. I think. And then some, I'm just gonna go black. I'm not gonna add uh, green because I want it to be pretty dark at the bottom. work that up into my red and then work my lizard and crimson down into the black that brush has got too much stuff in it so I'm going to switch to a small flat brush back to my red I'm gonna grab just a little little bit of white
kind of brighten up just like inside here. And then just a very, very little bit back here. Just so they look like they match a little bit. And uh, I can use this liner brush that I've been using. God, my hands look dead. That I was using earlier. I'm going to do... Um, A little bit of red and white just so that it's bright enough. All right, so I painted this tutorial and then I painted this candle on TikTok Live, like the same painting, just did it on live. So I'm gonna make my TikTok candle look like the YouTube candle. And I'm gonna start by changing the shape of the candles. I want it to look like it's melting, dripping down one side. So I'm gonna cut off the edge of both the reflection and the regular candle and I forgot to hit record on the second camera angle like where I usually show my palette but uh, none of the colors that or I'm sorry all of the colors that I'm going to be using to change the candle is exactly what I did to paint the candle the first time so there you're not missing anything um, this is just a flat brush and I'm just <clears throat> using black Bless you. Bless 
Bless you again. Bless you again. Bless you again. So now I'm going to just start painting some drips and I'm just rolling the brush between my fingers. I've just been using the CAD Red Light up until this point. Now I'm using a liner brush with some alizarin crimson and I'm just going to create a little bit of a shadow behind some of these little drippy parts of the wax. And now I'm going to start to add a little bit of white. And now for a couple of little drips of wax on the bottom of the candle, I'm going to hold my brush at this angle, push, and then release as I brush upwards. So push and then release. That one did not turn out good. <laughs> push, release, and release. <laughs>
And the very last thing I'm going to do is uh, make sure that I've got this candle flame reflection nice and blurry. On the TikTok version that I painted live, it looked really blurry and it looked great as a reflection. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, it, I'm using the same method that I used to paint the candle the first time. Um, I'm just making it making it a little less perfect. Um, so I'm just like smearing the paint more rather than keeping it all, you know, kind of in check. If you liked today's video, give that like button a tap and please consider subscribing. You can also find me on Instagram and TikTok where I upload content almost daily. Thank you for watching.